I am joined today by Nadja Hall, a master step family coach. She's been dubbed the queen of conflict resolution and dealing with blended families. Nadja's been seen on ABC, The Today Show, and in syndicated columns across the country. Nadja, welcome to Motivational Mondays. Thank you so much for having me, Corey. I'm so excited to be here. Oh man, I am so excited for you to be here too, because I wanted to interview you for a long time because I follow you on social media, like a, a fanboy basically, because <laughs> you do a lot of great stuff and you're always doing really um, thoughtful, thought provoking posts, but also very funny. So we'll make sure people can uh, follow you as well and get into your shenanigans for yes, the yes. podcast. But first uh, to begin, I want to know with your platform, your main platform is the blended family platform and dealing with step parenting and co-mothering. So before we begin into like what you do in that space, I'm really curious to know why you got interested in that space. Give me your story about that. Yeah. So I think like a lot of people in my case, art started to imitate life. I've always been a creator. I've always been an entrepreneur. And I started dating this amazing man about 19 years ago. And he told me that he was a daddy. And I had had inhibitions about that simply because of all the things I had heard from TV and my friends' experiences. You know, they don't really shine a positive light on people that are divorced or people mm -hmm. that are trying to co-parent. They always make it look like it's drama and toxicity. Right. So I was a little, I'm just going to be honest, I was a little bit hesitant, but he was literally and is literally, we ended up getting married, still married, mm -hmm. turned out to be the just most amazing man that I'd ever been with. One of the things, however, that started to happen was all the drama and toxicity that I had been warned about and I was fearful of started happening in our situation. Mm -hmm. It became a very real part of my life. I as I got to know him and the family life unfolded, I had to accept the realization that I joined a ready-made family. Mm -hmm. I firmly believe, Corey, that the family is the most important system that all of us are ever going to be a part of. It's our first system. And not all of them are functional, as you and I have discussed many mm -hmm. times. So I was literally witnessing real life childhood trauma happen to children. I was witnessing dysfunction. I was seeing uh, undiagnosed personality disorder, like all these things that I didn't have a name for at that time. So when I started researching, you know, I talked to my therapist about it. That didn't really help. Talk to the preacher man. He told me to help? pray it away. No Whoa. shade to the preacher man. Yeah. Um, but these resources were not just for this one specific area of my life. Um, those resources that I was coming across were not helping me. So I did what any woman would do, Corey. I built. I started first talking about my plight online, uh, not really sharing and spilling all my tea, but I started talking about it, just seeing, you know, what did people want? And as I started to um, gain an expertise, as, as you will, and an expertise sounds so eh, weird, but as I started to gain more experience, I'll right. say, I started to give people advice. And before I knew it, people were calling me and I was spending eight hours of my already busy day helping folks. And I was like, Naja, how can you flip this got to go into a coin? Because clearly you <laughs> love to do this, but how was this translating to your own bottom line? Mm -hmm. And so my business was born. That was about five, six years ago. Now I run a full scale coaching agency. I've grown from strictly seeing people in step families and having conflict in their blended families or their unblended families to coaching people through all sorts of aspects of life. I have some A-list celebrity clients, some politicians, mm -hmm. a lot of athletes. Um, so the business has, has definitely sprouted into something beyond my wildest dreams. Yeah, that's how yeah. I got started. That's my story. That's the, wow. that's the short version. <laughs> well, listen, I think it's fascinating because it's a multifaceted story because there's also a lesson there about taking something that you know or that you are good at. Like you mentioned the expertise as a word that may sound a little bit extravagant. But the reality is if you have gained a lot of knowledge in a certain area of life or experience of life, many very, very successful entrepreneurs, they've taken that knowledge and they've parlayed that into a career. And in your case, it happens to be a family counseling yeah. platform, but yeah. it's no different than if you had been you know, a mason and knew how to like lay bricks better than somebody else. And you said, I'm going to turn this into a career. I mean, it's just yeah. really, right. It's a foundation for a career. But I am curious to know too, like 
why do you think there is so much drama like that with step parents? I mean, is it just, is it jealousy because they now are angry because maybe their ex or their, their, their spouse is connecting with someone else emotionally? And I mean, I, I would imagine there's a lot of reasons, but do you have a couple main reasons um, that you see? Okay. I would say the, the, I think at the core, a lot of the drama, when you see two people that say, we're going to love each other forever, they pop out this baby, then they break up. Mm. They don't really learn how to consciously uncouple. So I think just from the beginning, a lot of us, I know I surely wasn't as a child. I was never taught healthy ways to resolve conflict. As an adult, I learned how to handle and communicate my big emotions. Um, so I, and I think there's also a lot of people that are just undiagnosed. We have, mm. and it's overused on social media. Everybody's a narcissist, but it's very true. All of us have some narcissistic traits. Mm. People possess a borderline personality or just some traits of that. People are not able to recognize this in, them, in themselves and especially before they start having kids with these partners. Mm. So you're left to kind of deal with a person's own unhealed trauma and their lack of ability to resolve conflict. I really think that's the root of it, Corey. Mm. They just don't know how to play in the sandbox together. Yeah, yeah. And although your topic is universal for all women, I do want to stress too that you 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 specialize, I would say, with the minority family, the the black family. I mean, you do it all, but I'm saying I know that a lot of your content really specifically deals with that dynamic because uh, it is a very different demographic and we have maybe yeah. different social economic situations we're dealing with, etc. So what do you find in that community are some of the biggest obstacles? Is it what you just mentioned? Like, is it the fact that maybe mental health in general is a taboo topic for African-Americans? What do you think about that? I don't want to sound like I'm being um, airheaded or that I am being tone deaf, but I do have a specific clientele. The people that come to me are the people that have already been with a therapist before. Um, they are the higher thinkers. They are, they know that they have a problem and they know mm. that they want to seek resolution. I think the misnomer that happens in the black community that they say about a lot of us is, oh, we think we are gonna pray it away. Christianity has been given a terrible rap because um, in the past we've seen a lot of theologians not support mental health and thinking that's a demon in your head when really a person is simply imbalanced. Yeah. Um, so, you know, I, I do deal with a, a very specific echelon of people of color. Of course, my business has expanded to, and I hate to be this all lives matter person, but one thing I've learned, people give me the a very rare glimpse into their souls, their beliefs, and their family systems. And if I sit a white family right here and a black family right here, and they have the exact same conflict, don't you know the same things keep these people up at night? Mm. the same things do now as a black person i will say that my black clients feel as it's easier because i speak their language yeah my okay. white clients love me because i teach from the systemic perspective specifically of the african family systemic perspective one thing that we as african descended people um no matter how where we come from we all kind of still carry that it takes a village mentality mm -hmm. that's one thing that i did not have not seen in european or white especially white american families um so when i come teaching these white folks about honey it takes a village you cannot do it alone. You yourself are not enough. You have to provide your child with outside resources. Mm. Um, they like that because it's right. It's not just my way, it's best practice. Mm. Um, but I will say, black. I, I, I no longer subscribe to the notion that black folks ain't getting uh, therapy because we are. Mm. We are paying top dollar. We have resources out there. And if we are not, I mean, I have, I have ex gang bangers, believe it or not as clients they come on and they pay that hourly session fee wow. and they get you know they say what they need to say and they express it and i speak to them in their language i have politicians that have had white politicians that have, have had children outside of their families and now their wife has to accept this new child and she's a stepmother to a kid that was born during her marriage mm. and so i have to speak learn how to speak their language speaking mm. the language of pain has become a universal thing for me, but also speaking the language of healing. 
Mm, I love that because it does have to begin with acknowledgement, accountability, and then you can move forward. I know so many people who struggle with that part of it, but I do think it is a stigma that's a bit past tense probably about therapy because I know for myself, uh, one of the best decisions I made, I was 28 years old and I went to therapy and I did not realize the unresolved childhood traumas that were there. Thank God I had a, a great therapist because I, I've heard stories where you might not get a therapist who's as skilled and, Very true. and, and great at what they do and people that don't feel like it. Yeah. yeah, right. So, I, you know, I know that can happen, but I do also recommend people get therapy and you did uh, tap into something else when you talked about the, the, the notion that it takes a village, but there's also what I'm getting into more and more with African-Americans is there's also ancestral trauma we're bringing forward oh my God. to our future generations. What do they call it? Uh, PTSD, post-traumatic slave disorder. It's, it's, uh, a, been thing. Proven, it's a thing. It's mm-hmm. been proven that trauma is passed genetically. Like if mm-hmm. you're a person that reads about epigenetics, like you really know trauma is something that is embedded in the very fiber of our DNA. Mm-hmm which is, you know, yeah. something that we try not to pass on to future generations. But yeah, I mean, I think if people are not in therapy or some sort of coaching or counseling now, with the advent of social media, like if you just scroll your timeline as if you're a 14 year old, you're seeing the resources, you're mm-hmm. seeing that in your timeline. So you know, it exists. When yeah. I was coming up, that wasn't a thing for no, me. No, no, we didn't have any I, of that. It, it wasn't a thing. I think we had scared straight for like the bad kids. <laughs> yeah, and it didn't work but, for a lot of the kids I know. So yeah, it did not <laughs> they work. They still ended up in Rikers. <laughs> so, exactly. Yeah, yeah. No, you're right. There, there are so many more resources, and I also think what's great and what's wonderful about the newer generations, especially I will talk to with the millennials and Gen Z. I'm really happy that you guys, I'll address you guys directly, are in a better place to handle the mental uh, anguishes that past generations had to deal with. Um, Gender identity issues, for one, is a great one, where I know that there's just much more inclusivity and freedom to move about in the skin that you demand to be in and that you want Mm. to be recognized in. And um, I didn't have that um, in my generation, you know, in the 80s growing up. It was a very different time. So I am happy that we're progressing moving forward. Yes, and, me too. Um, yeah, I think that's that's really a good thing. Now, I do want to move on to some other stuff because you are also an author and you have your Girl By book series, <laughs> right? So in the Girl By book you series- say, You got to say Girl By. Girl By, yeah. There you, you go. go. Girl By <laughs> book series. There you go. And it is a, I guess it's an ongoing series. I'm just checking my notes here to make sure I do it justice. But the yeah. uh, the Girl By book series, you have a couple of them right now. One is yes. the uh, the- uh, mindset makeover journal for stepmoms. Yes, and the, and, but the one I really love because it's a it sounds a bit more scandalous and fun <laughs> is girl, is girl by she's not going anywhere neither are you. So that mm. sounds like you're referring to a stepmother and the new girl or the, the either ex- one of them. Yeah. It's interchangeable. <laughs> yes. How was that? Because idea? I Tell wrote that, that book, Corey, for women that are thrust into this co-mothering situation and they don't want to be in it. Mm-hmm. They did not ask to be here. They were not invited, but boom, here we are at the table together and we need to figure this out. Yeah. It's not on the book cover. It says, this is not a kiss and makeup book. Cause I'm not trying to teach mothers and stepmothers necessarily how to be BFFs or end up being that little Hallmark card that we see. I just want you not to ruin this child's childhood. I don't want you them to re, I don't want you to re-traumatize them. I also want you to get your own healing. And so in that title, when I said she's not going anywhere, neither are you, that literally is speaking to whomever getting it. If you are a biological mother, it's telling you, honey, that stepmama ain't going anywhere. So how are we going to do this? Are we going to torture each other for the rest of this child's life? Or are we going to move on? Mm. And the stepmother, she's not going anywhere, neither are you. Stepmom, this woman is that kid's mother. They are bound by a soul tie that is one of the most, is the most powerful union that exists Mm -hmm. on this planet. She ain't going anywhere, boo-boo. So how are we going to make this work? Um, That book is speaking to both women and biological mothers and stepmothers equally have purchased that book and took me to an Amazon bestseller with buying that book. Mm, Wow, that's amazing. Congratulations on that. Thank you. I am wondering what role, well, not what role, I know what role they play, but at what level do you speak to the men 
or do you mm. in your book series? So there's a whole chapter called The Man in the Middle. Because let's be honest, if it wasn't for him, none of us would be here. He is a very <laughs> important factor. And I think so often men will kind of step aside and leave the one women to Fighting fight and, this yeah. battle that neither one of them started. They're not necessarily vested in and they don't know how they got there. Mm -hmm. So I do call to the forefront the men that are the reasons that these, these people, this whole situation exists. What is your responsibility? Perhaps did you um, start one relationship before the other one kind of ended officially? Have you been giving your child's mother false hope? Have you been completely honest with this new woman? Um, are you, and I see a lot of fathers doing this, they'll get in a relationship, a new relationship, and they'll start to negate responsibility over to mm. the new woman. Oh. And she becomes like a, a surrogate step up instant mom. And that is not a stepmom's job in my firm, very experienced, humble opinion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it reminds me of when I was about 15 and my mother was dating a, a really nice gentleman for a while. And he had a daughter who was about my age. Oh, and um, and I was an only child, you know, to my mom. I have other siblings that I discovered later, as you know that story. I, oh, that's <laughs> but, a whole episode. We whole other thing, yeah. That's a whole other show. <laughs> but um, but I, but it was interesting when I first met this girl. She was only with us for like a week. She came to stay with us, and one morning she called my mother, mom, and I literally looked across the table with like. Who with, are you talking to, girl? Right, it was just so, and she, you know, she was kind of endearing herself to my mother because her father was dating my mother and they seemed to be getting along. But I was like, no, that's my mom. You don't call my mom. And when I thought about that memory in relation to the work you do, I thought about even that as a dynamic when the Oof. children yes. are not kind of understanding how they should even react, uh, react and respond to the newness, right? Mm. So that in itself, I had that little moment. I was like, oh, was about to jump across the table when she called me <laughs> when she called my mom mom so Honey, i can imagine your kids, mom. Like, right, like what is that all about but i was also immature and being you know you know what you were a child and you had been accustomed to just being you and mama all these mm -hmm. years right and then your whole world is shaken up one thing i realized is that with our children a lot of adults are not equipped with the right tools to kind of help their kids transition into mm -hmm. what this looks like. We also have to realize, especially I see a lot of stepchildren starting to act out because they don't really have autonomy over the situation. They don't have any control or they don't have a say. All of a sudden they know they're getting a new stepmom or stepdad. They're getting some new siblings. They're having to share their parent and share their space. But no one has ushered this, them into this newness with delicacy. And they don't give them any sense of... Um, ownership in this mm. it's kind of like you're told what to do and children like a lot of adults don't really know how to express these big emotions so what do yeah, they do yeah. they act out mm -hmm. yeah. they carry out they act out they resist and so um I, I feel like if parents were to usher their children in with ease or at least give them a sense to where they feel like you are in control and you got to offer a lot of reassurance because what if your mom would have said looked at you and said you know, or later pulled you to the side and said, baby, you know, I know you heard that girl call me mama. I'm going to always be your mama. Now there's enough of me to go around, but you were, you came up in my heart, right, right. below my heart. Right. Nobody <laughs> can take the place of that. You right. know, that probably, you know, you needed reassurance. You're like, okay, my, my position is safe. I can breathe now and I can kind of be cool with this girl. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I think our parents yeah. just have to use their words. Yeah, yeah. I do often cite what I call behave. Um, I call it grown ups behaving badly, which is sometimes when they when they just don't step up to the plate and you know help kids get ushered through those situations for sure. Yes. That does bring me to ask you about in general your career. You're doing so well in your career in media, and I think you're a great role model for other young women looking to get into the media field. So just if you um have a few words of advice or wisdom about a young college student perhaps, or someone in college in general, yeah, looking to get into the media career, what would you suggest are some, some steps to take? If you are looking to embark on your media career, I would say this, no matter how old you are, no matter what type of equipment you have, start today. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be perfect. My first podcast, I recorded it from my phone. That one probably got maybe 50 listens, 50 downloads. 
But you know what? I just kept going. I literally mm-hmm. kept going. My my podcast now, um, I think we're getting 10, 20,000 downloads per episode. Wow. But that's just simply because I kept going. Also, talk about what you want to talk about. Mm-hmm. Be free and be yourself. Think about what your future self would want to hear. Always put things out that your grandma would never be ashamed to hear. Um, or your parents or some adult or some person out there that you respect, maybe a mentor. Think about yourself in the future. Be very careful and guard your image because you don't want things that you say because we know cancel culture is real. We don't want things that you say when you're 20 years old to come back and bite you when you're the CEO at 40 years old. So just be very mindful with your words. Always be fair. Most importantly, be consistent. Always, always, always be putting something out. Make sure you stay on the top of people's minds. Don't engage in social media fights unless you're getting paid for it. Don't do that. Um, And just always make sure you lead with love. Everything that I've done, even if it's been from um, a painful experience, has always been with the purpose of me teaching others so that I could save somebody else going through some of the things that I've gone through. So, um, yeah, be consistent, lead with love, guard your image, and watch your mouth. Awesome words of wisdom from the amazing Miss Naja Hall and author of the Girl by book series. So I am so happy you joined me today and thanks for your time and all the words of wisdom. And I love that despite the fact that you're discussing things that are about step parenting and co-parenting, a lot of those lessons about accountability, responsibility, being kind, being compassionate, that all spills out into other aspects of everyday life. So thank you so much for being here with me today. Thank you so much for having me. 